Okay, so 5, 9, and 5, 10 are two different sections of homework, but it's just the same type of practice over and over. So I've consolidated um, both of these sections into one lesson, uh, one lecture video. So uh, we're just going to jump right in and look at problems that are just a little more complex, but we are solving equations, meaning that there will be an equal sign in each of these problems. The end result should be a numbers on one side and your letter on the other side. So for this problem, I see parentheses. I can't do anything inside the parentheses because a one has an X and one is just a whole number, okay? So I cannot add those two together. What I do know is that this four is on the outside. It's touching that parentheses, so it means that it's multiplied in times each term. Remember, terms are separated by an add or subtract sign. So that four gets multiplied times two X. I multiply the numbers and bring the letter and four gets multiplied times four, which gives me a positive 16. So this whole piece became these two pieces here, okay? Bring down my 24 that has not been used. Okay, so now I'm at a two-step equation. I need to move the 16 to the other side. Okay, when I move 16, I subtract 24 minus 16. I get 8x on one side, and when I subtract, I get 8. I need x by itself, so I need to divide by the number that's touching the x. And so I do the same thing on the other side. 8 divided by 8 gives me a positive 1 for a final answer. Okay. Second problem is going to be y over 3 plus y over 6 equals 5 over 8. So I definitely need to get the fractions out of here because the y is actually in the numerator, okay? Um, we've done a problem before where y was a part, it was a fraction times y, but y is actually a part of this problem. So if I can multiply every term, and remember terms are separated by an add, subtract, or equal sign, so there's three terms in this problem. If I can multiply every term by the common denominator of this problem, then I can cancel out all of the fractions. So a common denominator for all of these um, is going to be 24 because 3 goes into 24, 6 goes into 24, and 8 goes into 24. All of them go evenly. So here's what you're looking at. I am going to have 24 over 1 times y over 3. I'm going to divide both of these by 3 because 3 is what I want to go away, right? I want a 1 on the bottom, so that's a divide sign, and this becomes 8. So 8 times y is 8y over 1, which is 8y. So this whole piece, simplified, became 8y. Okay, move on and let's talk about the next piece. Remember 24 is my new common denominator for all of these. When I multiply, I need to simplify. 6 goes into 6 one time. 6 goes into 24 four times. 4 times y is 4y over 1. It was a plus sign in the problem, so it's still a plus sign. So plus 4y goes down there. Okay, so I'm going to multiply 24 over 1 times this last piece. It doesn't matter that there's no y in it. I'm just getting rid of all of the fractions. I want to divide by 8 because that's what I want is a 1 on the bottom. Divide by 8 on both of these pieces here, and I get 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1, so this equals 15 as a whole number. So what I want to do now is take this new simplified fraction that has, um, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, not fraction, um, equation that has no fractions in it and solve for y. So I want you to see that these two are both the same because they are both y's. So I have 8 plus 4, which is 12. I have 12y equals 15. I divide by 12 on both sides because 12 is touching y, the opposite of divide or multiply is to divide. And so I find y equals 15 over 12. I can divide both of these by 3, right, just to simplify. So I end up with y equals 5 fourths, final answer. Okay. All right, so if I move on. Um, Let's look at a problem. I have 7x plus 10 equals 5x plus 18. I need the x's to be together and the numbers to be together. 
Okay, I can't divide by anything to get the number and the x apart until all of the x's are together and all of the numbers are together. So my first step is going to be to move the 10. And so I have 7x equals 5x plus 18 minus 10. I just move this one over here, so when I put them together, why can I put those two together? Because they're both just numbers. Um, I see a subtraction problem. So this rewrites to be 7x equals 5x, and 18 minus 10 gives me plus 8. Okay, I need to move the 5x, right? It's a plus 5x, so I need to move it by taking the opposite of it. And so now I have this problem. The x's stay the same, right? I have to subtract 7 minus 5 and get 2, and then bring 8 straight over, or leave the 8 on the other side. So now I'm trying to get the x by itself, and I do that by dividing by 2 because that's what I have attached to the x. And so x equals 8, min or 8 divided by 2 gives me a final answer of positive 4. Okay. All right, next problem. This is just extra practice, just kind of the same things over and over. So 6, parentheses, x plus 7 parentheses plus 2 equals 6 minus 6 times x minus 8, <laughs> sorry, and then parentheses minus 8 on the outside. Okay, so we know that inside the parentheses is where we should start because please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or that PEMDAS, the order of operations tells us to do that. I have x plus 7, one's a letter, one's a number, can't add those together, and then I have x minus 8. One's a number, one's a letter. I cannot subtract those. So I need to move on. I have no exponents, but I do have multiply. And this is multiply here, and this is multiply here. Distributing, okay? So 6 times x gives me 6x. 6 times 7 gives me 42. And then I bring down that plus 2 that hasn't been used. On the other side, I have negative 6 times x, which gives me negative 6x. I have a negative 8 times a negative 6. Two negatives make a positive, and 8 times 6 is 48. And then bring down this minus 8 that I haven't used yet. Okay, so now I've got to put together things that match. I've got to simplify by combining like terms. These two are simply numbers, so I'm going to have the 6x that stays the same, and 42 plus 2 gives me 44. On the other side, I have just numbers as well. 48 minus 8 gives me 40. So I bring down the minus 6x, and I get plus 44. Oh, I'm sorry, plus 40, because 8. If I minus 8, I get 40. Okay. I need to put the numbers together and the letters together. So I am going to um, add 6 to both sides to move that 6x over. So this becomes 12x. I bring down what I haven't used yet, which is the 44 and 40. I need to subtract 44 from both sides. And so the new problem I have is 12x equals 40 minus 44. We change the sign and change the sign of the number that follows. So I have this problem now. Signs are different. I subtract and take the sign of the bigger number. And so negative 4 is what comes out right there. If you don't like 40 minus 44 and you want it to be 44 minus 40, that's fine too. Either way, you're still going to get 4. And then we take the sign of the bigger number there. Okay, so I'm down here at the very bottom. Let me kind of move this up just a tad. And so I have 12x minus equals negative 4. I'm going to divide both sides by 12, and I find x equals, they both can simplify by dividing both of them by 4, and I end up with 1 third. One's positive, one's negative, so the answer is always negative. So x equals negative 1 third. Okay, let's do one last problem for this section. All right, I've got w minus 1 over 2 minus 7 
equals w minus 2 over 3. A whole number of 7 is also 7 over 1. I'm looking for a common denominator between 2, 1, and 3. What number do each of them divide evenly into? And I'm going to say 6. 2 goes into 6 3 times, 1 goes into 6 6 times, and 3 goes into 6 2 times. So I'm going to multiply each of these by 6 like we've done in the past. But I'm going to do it all in one step here. Okay, I want you to see that these are separate pieces, right? Here they all are. Okay, so in the first piece, I'm going to divide by 2 on both diagonals. So I have 3 times w minus 1 all over 1. We won't have over 1 anymore, but I am going to distribute this 3 to both of those. So 3 times w is 3w, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Okay, the next piece, there's nothing to simplify, but I am going to multiply 6 times 7 and get negative 42. I'm going to bring the negative down. It's actually 42, but there was already a negative there. Bring down the equal sign. Here I'm going to simplify, and I'm going to divide both of these by 3. So now I have 2 times the w minus 2 by distributing it in. It's over 1, so it's going to be just the whole number. So I end up with 2w minus 4, because 2 times w is 2w, and 2 times 2 is the minus 4 there. Okay, so we're ready to put together things that match. Okay, combining like terms is what we're doing. Oops, sorry, I'm trying to make some space. Okay, so on the left side of the equal sign, I need to put these two together. Okay, they're both numbers. So I have a minus 3 minus 42. It needs to be an addition problem. Change the sign, change the sign of the number that follows. So what I have is an addition problem where signs are the same. So I'm going to add and keep the sign. Bring down the w, the 3w that hasn't been used. Bring down the equal sign, and there's nothing on the other side that can be combined. Okay? So from here, I need to make myself some space, I guess, because I write huge. Oops. Not sure how I did that. Okay, so I need to decide which way we're going to go with this. I'm going to say I'm going to subtract 2w, put my w, sorry, on uh, the left side. So I have 3 minus 2, w is part of my answer, and I end up with 1w. Bring down what I haven't used. I'm going to add 45 to both sides, and I end up with w equals negative um, 4 plus 45. Okay, signs are different. Subtract and take the sign of the bigger number. w equals a positive 41. Okay, so we're just applying the dis distribution rule, the clearing fractions rule, and the two-step and one-step equations. We're just putting everything into one problem and trying to make sure that we understand what the rules are. So if you need some help, please contact me and let me know.